Well, I'll call this uh, meeting of August 19th to order, and we will begin with uh, Pastor Timothy Lee of the Apostolic Promise Church of Cape Cod with our invocation. Thank you for the invitation, the opportunity to pray at yeah, this great meeting, and uh, let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you so much for people who serve this community that make Cape an incredible place to live and raise a family. God, we pray blessing on everyone that works and labors, the fire department, police department, city officials, every aspect of this city be blessed. God, many of them weary themselves in the work. Many times there's limited funds and resources, amen, to get everything done that needs to be done. We pray your blessing and favor on decisions to be made tonight. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please join the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> As we begin our study session this evening, we have a very, very special occasion. We want to welcome a new fire chief, Travis Hollis, to our community, and his family and friends. At this point, I'm going to turn over to our city manager, Scott Meyer, uh, for part of this ceremony. Travis, you'll come forward. Our uh, deputy city clerk will administer uh, the oath of the office. It's now my pleasure to give you your fire chief badge for the city of Cape Girardeau. This is not just for me and your council. It's from all the gentlemen and ladies that you will serve and all the citizens of Cape Girardeau. Thank you. Thank you, sir. to introduce and uh, then uh, the podium is yours to say a few words. Okay. I'd like to introduce my wife and uh, the daughter of Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Talented 
um, uh, fire uh, staff, leadership. We, have, we believe we have the right capital, we have the right apparatus, and we just need that right leadership. We went through and looked at a lot of people, but we are confident that we have the right man for the job right now. So Travis, give a few words. Yeah, Mr. Meyer. Mr. Mayor, uh, thank you for your support and uh, your recognition of uh, what I do to bring to the table. And uh, I have a great fire department uh, behind me here. Uh, you know, they're one of the premier fire departments in the region. Uh, a lot of traditions that I will uh, honor. And I look forward to uh, building bonds and relationships. Thank you very much. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. We're thrilled you're here in Cape Girardeau, and we hope you learn to love this community like all of us do. And, and uh, looking forward to a great relationship. Thank you very much. As we move through our study session, we have uh, one presentation tonight: the Silver Spring Fire Department presentation. My name is Jason Maddox. I'm with Mako Development Company. Uh, we are developers of uh, senior affordable housing, and we have a long, successful history in Cape Girardeau. Uh, but we, what I'm here uh, tonight to ask for is your uh, support and advancing application that we intend to submit to the Missouri Housing Development Commission next month uh, to build uh, what you're seeing on the screen. Uh, it would be a second phase to our Silver Springs project. Uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with what we've done in the past. And we've actually got four uh, previous developments here in town, all, all the housing seniors. We've got about 200 units. They are all uh, occupied. And as of last week, I was talking to the management company, and there's 224 senior applicants on the waiting list. So there's still an enormous demand uh, that, that we would like to, to help meet. So, um, it, like I said, I, I know I've talked to several of you before, but if there's questions about this proposal that you have, I'm certainly here to answer any questions. Anyone have any questions? I know that the uh, people that live there are very happy. It's uh, certainly a great sector of our community that needs housing and needs affordable housing. And uh, you've done a great job. Thank you. I, I was, uh, the last one I guess we did was maybe three or four years ago, but the first one I think was in 94, which I was actually attending Southeast Missouri State at the time, so it's been a long time. Well, I know that you and your group in my day-to-day -day life, I've been aware of what you guys do for many years, and, and whether it's Cape Girardeau, Southeast Missouri, or other, or other uh, states, you guys do a top-notch job, and we, we're, we're glad that you're investing in Cape Girardeau again. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Communications and reports. Uh, any counsel? I just would like to say something real fast. Uh, I don't know if everybody noticed it this weekend, but uh, Twisted Cat Outdoors hosted a catfish tournament based out of the Red Star Access. Uh, yeah, and in Ward 1, they had, I made some notes, they had 40 boats. Uh, 103 anglers, and all total, they weighed 1,642 pounds of catfish. Wow. I think a lot of times people underestimate what kind of a recreation opportunity, uh, especially for anglers, the Mississippi River can be, and just how important having the Red Star Access right north of downtown Cape Girardeau is. It's a great place to host an event. It was a beautiful day on Saturday, and it was great because I was drinking coffee in the morning, and I got to watch all 40 of those boats go out into the Mississippi River. Half, half went south, half went north. I, I heard one account that one angler went all the way, uh, went from north 80 miles to, to catch Channel Cat. So, uh, pretty cool. What was this? Twisted Cat Outdoors. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it, it's a, a cool little organization. They travel around. They, they do these outdoor catfishing tournaments. Uh, but we just happened to be in Cape, and I think it was a pretty big one for them. So it's a, a neat event for Cape Girardeau. We always have neat events in this community. 
And uh, that's just something that I really thought needed to be called your attention to. Do they do this at a specific time? I mean, did, did they have to postpone this because of the river levels? And well, you know, it wasn't for a couple of months there. The Red Star Access was that commission, so yeah, yeah that's even, what I mean. Yeah, yeah, so they would have had to had to play around with. Uh, It'd be kind uh, of a neat deal to coordinate this tournament with the Cape Catfish baseball team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just send a baseball player out there on the river with them. Just <laughs> <laughs> a unique unique opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Mayor, I wanted to. Um, uh, mention an event that's uh, coming up uh, next uh, Friday, August 30th at 1 p.m. Uh, the Missouri Mental Health Foundation is uh, offering a, a free screening of a documentary that was created here in Missouri. It's called Not My Child. And it was created to help educate and support families affected by substance abuse disorders. Uh, it features parents sharing personal experiences and knowledge to help support other parents and families. It explores that there are different ways for, for people to recover from these illnesses. Uh, it, that uh, event is um, August 30th at 1 p.m. at uh, the Canvas Event Center at 1922 Independence, and it is a free event. We encourage, uh, I know that uh, the Missouri Mental Health Foundation um, screens this all over the state and uh, it's very impactful and I would encourage the community to attend if you're able. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Well, first of all, I want to thank the voters of Cape Girardeau for passing our renewal of our capital improvement tax uh, in the six dollars. It says a lot, uh, even though there's a low voter turnout, it says a lot that it passed with a margin of almost 73%. And uh, it puts our city in a great position for the future for uh, New City Hall, uh, airport redevelopment, taking care of our streets and our water system, and doing those things to make Cape Girard a great place to live. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of things happening. Uh, this next uh, Wednesday, we have our SIMPO board meeting uh, to talk about the uh, EDI interchange at Center Junction between Cape and Jackson. Uh, you know, I know SIMPO's vote is not really uh, time owed up to doing one specific thing. They can do what they want to do, but, but they would like our, our support. And uh, there are two plans presented. I don't know how that's going to turn out. Uh, but I'm sure there's going to be a big crowd there. Uh, Thursday night, we kick off our third Citizens Academy. And uh, that is uh, that's something I think that has grown from the first year and maybe morphed a little bit into something a little different. And uh, people have offered suggestions to make it a better experience. And uh, I think it's a great way to uh, educate the public and teach them about what our city does and uh, what goes on every day in, in Cape Girardeau. Uh, a lot of other things, the fall series of Tunes at Twilight kicks off. Uh, if you did not see uh, the Play Cape magazine in your newspaper, it gives you just a, an inkling of what Parks and Rec does in this community for activities for not only adults but our kids. And, and, and it goes on year round and it just it lays out the, the plans for this fall and the leagues and everything else that's going on. And uh, it's a great, it's a great uh, thing for people to look at. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. Uh, we want to welcome uh, Old Town Cape's new executive director, Liz Haynes. Uh, Marla's been here 13 years, and she's done some great things for Old Town Cape. We have a great relationship, uh, and it just progressed and progressed. And and Marla uh, felt like she's accomplish what she needed to accomplish and want to move on to, to other better things in her life and we understand that. Uh, but we've got a local girl uh, that came back home and, and her heart is in Cape Girardeau and that means a lot too. So we're looking forward to working with Liz and Old Town Cape in the future. Uh, it's great to have a new fire chief. Another big thing happening next week is uh, downtown and I know there's going to be some, some uh, disruption in everyday activities because part of Main Street and Spanish Street will be closed uh, that afternoon for a while for the Corvette Caravan. Uh, 
Uh, it was here five years ago in 2014, and they had uh, maybe 400 or so uh, Corvettes, local Corvettes, and, and groups from around the country. They're expecting 900 this year. The uh, group from Southern California fell in love with our city. Uh, they spread the word. There are groups from Central California, Northern California, from Idaho. There are people shipping Corvettes from Australia, from Hawaii, and they're all driving in a caravan to Cape Girardeau headed to Bowling Green, Kentucky, where Corvettes are made. It's a big deal. They only do it every five years. And uh, the uh, local uh, group, your local Corvette group, includes this area and maybe Missouri are having a uh, separate parade down Broadway I think at 3.30 if I'm not mistaken uh, and they'll park in that huge lot in front of Art Van Furniture uh, then at uh, 5 the Corvette Caravan arrives down Broadway and they will park them along Spanish Street and Main Street and from 5 to 9 they're having food trucks live music and lots of things happening downtown. Some of the merchants are staying open. The restaurants are going to be swamped, so uh, the food trucks will help that situation as well. Uh, big, big thing for our community. They, they love being here in Cape Girardeau, and this thing may just keep growing every five years, so it's a big thing. I know it's a minor inconvenience for those downtown, but it's a, it's a big thing for our, for our community. So if you get a chance, uh, the uh, casino is offering free parking and shuttling downtown, and they can park a thousand cars. Uh, so they're being a big help. There are other parking lots that want to Main and Broadway will be available, and other parking as you can find it. So uh, please try to take part in that. Uh, I can't think of too much else. Got uh, everything I need. What? You got everything I was going to say. Everything you're going to say? Yeah, you got I don't it. I want to steal your thunder. No. Sorry about that. No. Sorry about that. No. Uh, we'll move right into items for discussion in our P&G report. Uh, there was no P&G meeting last um, well, week. So. Well, there was a report last week. There was They canceled it. That's correct. All right. Uh, Mr. Bowman. Is anybody here this evening to appear before the council for an item that is not on the agenda? Anybody here to appear for an item that is not on the agenda? If not, we will move into the agenda review. Yeah. Yes, uh, Council, uh, we will need to uh, remove mm -hmm. item number five from the consent agenda, um, as is usually the case with these uh, tax bills. Once the county assessor gets through with all their assessment, uh, we have to tweak it. A little bit, uh, and so I believe you have in front of you uh, the uh, slight change that needs to be uh, to the rates um, regarding item number five. So we we'll need to uh, remove that from the consent and then uh, have it amended. Um, so items uh, uh, two, three, four, and uh, six and seven are the second and third uh, from last time. Uh, number two is the promotion. Uh, grant for the airport, uh, three and four are record flats, uh, six is the no parking on Jimberry Way, and seven is the speed limits uh, along the southwest end of um, So you will recognize those from last time. Uh, eight and nine are resolutions that, uh, that extend uh, some on-call contracts we have with a couple of engineering firms for Taylor and for Bowen. Uh, number 10 is uh, application, authorizing application for our JAG. Uh, grant. Um, this is a regular grant we uh, put in for each year. Uh, number 11 is for snow removal equipment at the airport. It uh, always seems like we're running into some issues with uh, Buy American on those, and so uh, that's with that. And then number 12 is uh, the president uh, is the um, resolution uh, supporting the proposal for MAKO that you saw the presentation uh, just now. And then number 13 is a uh, letter of recommendation regarding the uh, Central Air Service uh, for uh, Sky and West uh, Airlines and service to Chicago. So uh, that is the consent agenda uh, without uh, number uh, five. Are there other items you need to uh, have moved or want to discuss? Not 
the new new, new ordinances. Uh, number 14 is uh, regarding automatic pool covers. Uh, this is a, an issue that uh, our new the new standards for pool covers allow an automated pool cover to be used instead of a fence. Uh, our Board of Adjustment looked at that and said that uh, given the fact that sometimes the, the uh, Powers off, and you wouldn't be able to put it back. They feel more comfortable keeping the fence requirement in, so they recommended uh, that uh, that exception no longer be granted and the fence be required. Um, number 15 is uh, a storm shelter requirement that the new standards uh, require that all schools, when they build on, that they have to have a storm be the storm shelter requirement. Um, again, that went to the board of adjustments. They recommend that we remove that um, that requirement. Uh, and work with communities to address storm sheltering and more, and more holistic way rather than forcing that noise on the school. So those those two uh, adjustments that are a little um, different, but again, we're working with people to uh, come up with the best solution uh, that protects people. Um, Sixteen is the imposition of the uh, one one quarter one percent uh, capital improvement sales tax. This is what was authorized by the voters. Um, uh, because the last time it was, we also did a, an ordinance, uh, we need to do it again this time. So that's a short, long short of that. Uh, 17 uh, allows us to purchase uh, some property at 3207 Bernice Street. It's property that we uh, no longer need and we're able to sell it to an adjacent uh, property owner. And then uh, 18 is a temporary construction easement uh, for the Hopper Road Box Culver project. Any of those items that uh, you'd like to discuss further? <coughs> Under other business, uh, we'll have a, an item to discuss the appeal of the denial of liquor license renewal, and um, we'll handle that. And then uh, lastly, the last item that we have will be the appointment of the warden three unexpired term. Um, we will have some business under closed session tonight. I'll point out that after that uh, appointment of the Ward 3 in the prior term, we will swear in that person tonight. And uh, we decided to do that at the very end of the meeting because I didn't want to put somebody in a position of being sworn in and then have to vote on council business. Uh, it just made sense, so that's why we're delaying that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any questions? Scott? Scott, I think you have to tell everybody that I will be abstaining from 19 and other business. Yes. And at this point, we will call the regular session to order. Have a roll call. Ryan Essex. Here. Bob Clark. Here. Robbie Gard. Here. Jason Timber. Here. Shelly Moore. Here. Dan Preston. Here. I'll now entertain a motion to adopt the agenda with the amendment to remove item 5 from the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Gar, second by Shelley. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. <coughs> Are there any individuals who need to appear before the council for any items listed on the agenda this evening? Are you including the local license review? We will take that up uh, separate under other business. Okay. Anybody who appear for the council on any item that's on the agenda? If not, we'll move in the consent agenda. Great.
2024, no then spending schedule F of section 26-247 of the city code by establishing the park at any time on the north side of the Missouri Way in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri, no then spending schedule F of section 26-247 of the city code by establishing no park at any time on the north side of the Missouri Way in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. 19-125 and ordinance ring schedule A section 26-228 of the city code by reviewing certain speed limits on southwestern Boulevard and establishing new speed limits on the southwestern Boulevard in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. And ordinance ring schedule A section 26-228 of the city code by reviewing certain speed limits on southwestern Boulevard and establishing new speed limits on southwestern Boulevard in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. 19-121, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute an agreement with Taylor Engineering and Lancer being named for general engineering and infrastructure projects in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. 19-122, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute an agreement with Bowman Engineering and Lancer being named for general engineering and infrastructure projects in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. 19-128, a resolution authorizing application to the Edward Burns Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Program, fiscal year 2019, for the solicitation and authorizing city manager to execute all necessary grant program documents. 19-134, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute an agreement with energy companies and for snow removal equipment at the Cape Verde Regional Airport in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. 19-135, a resolution of support for the proposal from Mako Development Company, LLC, for the Silver Springs 2 Apartments Housing Development. 19-136, resolution authorizing city manager to make recommendations to the United States Department of Transportation for Skywest Airlines to provide air carrier service under the Essential Air Service Program at the Cape Verde Regional Airport. Do you have before you the consent agenda? Move to adopt the consent agenda. I move to adopt the record. Second. Second. Second by Dan. Any discussion? I have one there, and that's to Chief Blair. How competitive is the JAG scholarship or the, uh, yeah, the Edward Byrne? I mean, do we think we'll have a chance at that? Yeah, it's an annual grant that we get awarded every year. We uh, okay. So it's, it's not a competitive grant. It. Okay, thank you. But we still have to apply for it. I got you. Yeah. And we, I guess we used, we got, plate readers before with this? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. New ordinances. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go back to uh, bill number 19-123. An ordinance providing for the levying of the annual city revenue tax, public health tax, special business district number two tax for the fiscal year ending on the 30th day of June 2020. An ordinance providing for the levying of the annual city revenue tax, public health tax, special business district number two tax for the fiscal year ending on the 30th day of June 2020. As amended. As amended. And the amended part was that we increase it by Victor, can you speak to that? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'll be brief. Um, the basic premise with property taxes is that we raise each year roughly about the same amount of money in total as we raised in the previous year. So it's dependent upon the level of valuations. And this year the overall level of valuations has decreased. Therefore the formula that pays that the rate must increase marginally so that we continue to receive the same amount of revenue. The general fund currently gets just a shade over 1.5 million from real estate tax, which is about 5% of the total revenue to the general fund. Uh, personal property tax equates to about $370,000, which is just a shade over 1% of the revenue to the general fund. So in essence, we get the city gets a marginal amount of the property taxes collected by the county. Okay. It looks like that margin is 0.0007%. That's not. Yeah, that right. was what the increase was. So the increase was. Okay. okay. Came mm -hmm. last time, but in the first reading, the second, third was yeah. 0 0.0007, and then the uh, health fund I think was 0 0.0001. They weren't. They were very minuscule. It's good enough. Thank you, Victor. Uh, you have a motion. Second. Second. Motion. Moved as amended by Dan, seconded by Robbie. Any discussion? <coughs> Not all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 
Other two ordinances, Bill Number 19-129, an ordinance amending Chapter 7 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Cod, Missouri, reported regarding automatic pool covers for free. Seven minutes. Motion to move by Robbie, director second. Second. Second by Dan. Any discussion? Yes. Can you, if I was reading the history correctly, did, uh, we, did we change this when, when automatic pool covers came into being? They were then kind of allowed to take the went, place of, you know, the fences, and now we're Yeah, I think we went to a, a, new, a new code which included the Pool code here a couple of years ago. Is that correct, Molly? Correct. We adopted the 2015 building code that included a provision that would allow an automatic swimming cover in lieu of fence. But we're going right. back to that. Right. right. We believe that the fence is a better protection. Um, with self latching gates and whatnot, it's much more reliable than an automatic pool cover, which requires a human to actually um, close and open that cover. So we see a fence is much more reliable protection. To my mind, create an app for that. There are apps on there. There are actually apps that will do that, but again, it requires a human to close and open that cover. So my garage would have done that. Anything else? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carried. Bill number 19-130, an ordinance amending Chapter 7 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Cod, Missouri, regarding storm shelters. First reading. Submit. Second. Motion made and what part by seconded by Stacy. Any discussion? Yeah, I was, I was just a tad bit confused on that when Scott was explaining it. Would you mind elaborating just a tad? I'll, uh, uh, I'll say what I said and if um, I would like to uh, elaborate on it. Uh, basically, um, schools have asked us, uh, under the, the update uh, 2015 code, we had to, uh, when a school does an expansion, then they have to provide it, uh, a storm shelter under that. Uh, they thought like that's a, an undue burden uh, or just a, you know, a small uh, increase or just a small addition, so they, they petitioned. Uh, their architect and then uh, the school district came forward and asked for a waiver. Board of Adjustments looked at it and, uh, and they recommended a waiver and the removal, actually the removal of this provision. That's correct, um, Mayor and Council members. Um, there's a provision in the code that actually said that for the addition that was constructed uh, facility in Gary Hills here, he can correct me if I'm wrong, that a storm shelter had to be provided to accommodate the occupancy of that addition. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense when we have, you know, 300 students in a storm shelter that might only accommodate 40 students. So um, that creates problems in and of itself, and we didn't think that was, um, that made a lot of sense. And uh, in addition, the additional cost and whatnot, that the school just did not think it was um, worth pursuing at the time. And we believe there are other avenues for pursuing those uh, shelters that can accommodate everyone in the future. If I may add, it's just not schools, it's also fire stations, police stations, and communication centers also require add storm shelters to any project requires a building permit to add on to a current school building. Kudos to the, kudos to the school system to you know realize that and come and, and really work with us and, and get it right, it sounds like. So good partnership again. Anybody else? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Bill number 19 131. In order to the city of Cape Cod, Missouri, extending the imposition of the present one quarter of 1% capital improvement sales tax from its expiration date of December 31st, 2019 to December 31st, 2034. So moved. Second by Mr. Gerard, second by Dan. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 19-132, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a special warranty deed to Jerry Collins and Brenda Collins for property located at 3207 Bernice Street in the city of Cape Carmel. So moved. Motion by Ryan. Second. Second by 
Stacy. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 19-133, in order to accepting a temporary construction easement from Terry and Cynthia McDowell for the Hopper Road Box Culvert Project in the City of Cape Cod, Missouri. Second. 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 Okay. Second by Ryan, second by Robbie. Any discussion? Kudos to them for getting that done yeah. right before school. Man, they did a great job. Went down to the wire, too, didn't it? They were there early and they were there late. Yeah, I think that was, was that Nip? Yeah, I mean, I got calls all summer asking when we can. I asked Molly, and they were like ahead of schedule by a few days, right? Maybe? They, they got it done when they needed it. They got it done when they They opened it right on schedule. I mean, they did a good job. Well, they had some limited traffic there before they really yeah. opened it, and, but it really did work out great. It looks great. And uh, they up the day, that box extension to finish out. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Under other business, we have two items. The first is a consideration of appeal for denial for a liquor license bill application for Ricky Lynn Warner, EBA River, River Valley Banquet Center, LLC, <coughs> 631 South Street Street. I will remind uh, that uh, our speaker will be on a timer. You have five minutes to present your case. I appreciate that, Council, but I want to remind you that you're not in legislative session at this point. You're in administrative judicial session. That's true. And matters of this type do not have time limits. So like criminal cases, you have to discuss the topics that are involved, not whether or not they're good public policy or bad public policy. So I think that's a denial of due process to arbitrarily and capriciously set a time limit on the taking of someone's property to this extent. Um, so, you know, you can, argue you, can, you can make any motion you want. It's the council's property to set a time limit on anybody that addresses the council. I don't that. Uh, after the council meeting this evening, I, you know, as you look in your ordinances, you'll see that this is as far as the appeal goes, except under the Administrative Procedure Act, you get filed in circuit court and under 42 U.S.C. 1983, it was filed in federal court. So if you don't get to hear it tonight, we'll get to hear it at a later time. Um, you have two functions tonight. The first is to decide if your city ordinances are valid, and then if the city manager followed them to the exact letter of the law. Um, do you all remember the Kerry case that came out about 16, uh, 2016? Um, does that ring a bell? The city got slapped with, what, a couple hundred thousand dollars in attorney's fees and uh, um, damages. And it uh, was all because that you wouldn't handle the appeal properly. Um, I don't know how many of you all have even read the liquor uh, statutes that are involved tonight. If you haven't read them, I don't know how you could possibly be qualified pass judgment on whether they've been complied with. This case has several preemption problems. If you look at 1.3 of your ordinances, you'll see that city ordinances are not carved in grant. They're subject to preemption by all state, federal laws, and state and federal constitutions. The ones that are involved in this situation are grossly uh, preempting your city ordinances. You can type them up, you can vote on them, you can print them up, you can put them in the code, and the federal court strikes them down, just like they did in Kerry. And in the case before that, it was Singer. Uh, so, you know, I think the city sometimes has an odd view of how permanent uh, and enforceable their statutes are. This case presents some extraordinarily manhandling of the evidence by the police department that needs to be examined in some detail um, creates a considerable amount of constitutional problems in dealing with people's rights of assembly, their uh, uh, rights of association, and this, the police are trying to put Mr. Warner in a category, as by their own admission and in their letters to the city manager, in a separate category from anyone else. 
that raises equal protection problems. Um, I can't imagine, after having been slapped around by as much as Judge Jackson did, that uh, you're no more interested in hearing but five minutes of this problem. Um, the regulation of liquor is an animal in and among it on itself. It, it controls, um, it's controlled purely by the State Liquor Control Act. The cities have no independent power except what's given them. And under 311.040 of the Missouri statutes, cities have powers to regulate them. But they can't be inconsistent with the Liquor Control Act. Um, if you, the state legislature made a major change in 2016 to section 311.220, and that was that they no longer have to abide by or wait for a city liquor license before they issue theirs. Mr. Cunningham can explain to you the purpose of that change, but the bottom line is uh, the courts have ruled that once the state has issued a liquor license, which they have to Mr. Warner, taking in consideration as to whether or not he complied with all the city ordinances and their um, opinion, maybe no opinion, but they have the right, uh, the city has no ability to undo the state's action. I dropped off a book, you all apparently have no interest in reading it, but citing those cases and giving you the exact language of them. Uh, basically, since this is, the state is the sovereign and you have a derivative uh, power that derives from it, you don't have any ability to undo the state. I'll allow you another five minutes because I consider the first part of your statement introductory. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, at the time the city manager issued his uh, denial, I don't believe he was aware that the city or the state had issued um, his um, um, its license, thereby denying the city of Cape Girardeau the ability to collaterally attack is what the courts refer to it as. Uh, you'll find that in the cases that are marked under tabs 21 and 22. Um, Whenever you have a liquor license renewal, you have to constant, the courts have recognized that a renewal of a liquor license, not an initial one, but a renewal, is property subject to the 14th Amendment. You can't deprive people of their rights, liberties, or property without due process of law. In this case, unlike most of the other major cities in Cape and the Liquor Control Act, you have no right to meet with the city manager, present your evidence, question the evidence that the police have supplied, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's not an adversarial proceeding. Um, it's a unilateral decision, and then it goes to a liquor review board that's comprised of two city employees and somebody selected from the council. An, un an inherently unbiased tribunal is the foundation of due process. In addition, several of the sections, Ordinance 533, et cetera, et cetera, are vague and ambiguous under the federal court standards. They don't give people a standard so that they know how to comply and not be in violation of it. And in addition, it ha they have to be precise enough to give guidance so that when it's enforced, um, it can't be enforced in an arbitrary and capricious stand, uh, standard. The taxing authority under the liquor, under Chapter 5, is improper. I mean, I just went through this the other day. In municipal court, you can't, the city can't collect state sales tax and county property tax as part of a liquor license um, thing. I mean, there's all sorts of problems involved with this. The, Shooting, the major shooting that was, that was involved in Mr. Warner's business was an attack on his business. The city had 33 shootings in June, 24 or 26 in July, and so far it's had six or seven at the Jefferson School, at the Cape Girardeau Pool, at every place else. 
um, just four blocks from his business was a shooting on Ellis that had 40 casings that were found. Uh, and the police did not, when they submitted their information to the city manager, they didn't supply a uh, statement from a witness who saw where the shooting started. This had nothing to do with the party of 19-year-old prom attendees at the River Valley Banquet Center. This was some sort of gang or whatever problem. It started on the church parking lot, and they were shooting different directions. And they finally, one guy got behind the cars at the banquet center that were parked there. That's why the back windows were shut out and not the front ones, as they were shooting towards it. Um, <clears throat> that shooting would have occurred if the banquet center had been closed. Uh, it had nothing to do with what was going on inside the building at 11.30 at night. That's a police problem. The question that, you know, that the city has presented is, is this business a danger to the neighborhood? I submit that the neighborhood is a danger to this business. This is a dangerous territory down there. And at the Liquor Review Board, they said, well, you know, for public safety reasons, we need to close this down. Well, when you had the shooting on Ellis, and you had houses that could have been struck, people in cars, for public safety reasons, you could tell everyone to move. Except you don't have that constitutional right to take the property without just compensation. Nor do you have the right to infringe upon Mr. Werner's business uh, for what is perceived to be some sort of public safety thing. That's a police problem. They need to be protecting River Valley Banquet Center. Not, granted, if there was no one down there, they couldn't get hurt. But if there's no one on Ellis Street, they couldn't get hurt. If there's no one at Jefferson School, or you're going to put an aquatic center, no one could get hurt. I mean, that's not what it means when it says public safety. Um, I encourage you to wrap up your testimony. Well, I wish it be that simple, sir. Um, the police department supplied information to the city manager listing some 50 or some odd calls that had been made police calls to that location. To read it, it looked horrendous. I spent 120 some odd dollars on the Freedom of Information Act and got the call rolls of those calls. You'll find out that, and it's exhibit number one in your book, that of those calls, all but about six were made by the business itself requesting police protection. Either their back door was broken into or a strange party walked in when they were opening their doors. There were eight trespassing cases against these Whitney brothers, whoever they are, who were notorious apparently in the house tape, uh, and finally were arrested. Why they weren't arrested the first time, I don't know. That's seven calls they could have saved. One girl came from having lived across the street. She was having a mental problem of some kind, and she came to the bar and asked them to call the 911, and she told them that she was in a bad way. And they sent the EMS and did something with her. Uh, three of the calls were for traffic accidents that occurred uh, in front of the building. Those are not chargeable against the liquor license event. When you look at Rhodes gas station down the street, they've had, uh, and this is your exhibit number two, three shootings. And in addition, about 25 more disorderly fights, et cetera, et cetera. No one's talking about taking their liquor license away. They had a shooting up here on North Spring. Two people sh shot at each other outside. Uh, that's not a reflection of their liquor sales. That's not a reflection of their right to do business. That's a reflection of crazy people and lack of having it under control. Uh, it just seems more likely. It's just like when the first policeman, if you'll read the incident reports, he was a block and away when he heard the, fight, was, heard the shootings. There's no way that he could tell if the shots were coming from the church lot or the um, River Valley Banquet Center. But he announces to his radio dispatch that shots are coming from the River Valley Banquet Center. So every policeman that arrived, I don't know, there were 30 or so, 
that night all came with prejudice in their mind that this was a shooting involving the banquet center. Uh, there's no way that he could have known that from a block and a half away. Uh, he could have said in the vicinity of it, but that's not what the call roll shows. If you look at the number of fights and things downtown, you'll see River City Banquet Center had very few in comparison to the Blue Diamond at 16, Hot Shots at 30, Shakers at 17. They had a firearm incident at Hot Shots, and a guy I think got his throat slashed too the year before. Uh, Shakers had a guy shot right outside their business. No one argued that they should have their liquor license taken away. Uh, it had nothing to do with it, and it had nothing to do with them, with Rivers Valley. The second incident that is cited is someone leased the banquet hall for a birthday party, and they hired a band with supposed gang affiliations. Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Smith wrote a letter to the city manager saying that Mr. Warner fits in a special category, which raises a red flag of equal protection, where he should have done social media research to find out you know, who these people were. First of all, you don't go through a guest list when you are in public business, you know, when your convention center has, a pe has people, when the Cape Girardeau Country Club has a wedding. You think they go through the guest list? on social media and see what they have. Plus, when did having articles on YouTube or social media become I mean, guilt by social, social media? Uh, you know, if these people have been convicted, if they're under prosecution, something like that, that's one thing. We just think that they have, and I don't even know what a gang affiliation is. I don't think it's illegal to belong to a gang. If they create a criminal act, it's a conspiratorial act. But I mean, merely belonging to one, uh, is not a uh, crime that I'm aware of. It's nothing I would you know, encourage. I don't encourage people to burn flags, but they have the right to do it. And these people have the right to conduct their business or whatever else until such time as there's a criminal act. Now, the police knew this. They discouraged it for other businesses from uh, leasing to them, which I have some problems with, that state action that is interfering or tortious interference with contracts, and these people, to my knowledge, who are not convicted, who are not on probation or anything else that would prevent them from attending an event like that, but they placed a policeman outside of the River Valley Banquet Center. Nobody told them that this could be a problem. They might have canceled it too. But, you know, this is the, this is the Pimp Charter Police Department trying to get into the back door what they can't do in the front door, and that's exercise police action to infringe upon the right of association and the right of assembly. And those are civil rights issues, and they, you know, they're not going to end here tonight if we can't resolve them. Uh, the, uh, uh, I'll give you another minute to tie up your comment. But that, uh, again, the other thing that, that was cited in the city manager letter was a fight that occurred one night. Two girls slapped each other, or one girl slapped the other, I don't know which. Uh, she was arrested, it was an assault. It's no different than Blue Diamond 16, or Hot Shots 30, or anything else. Uh, things like that just happen. Uh, you know, if you count up all the incidents that occur in downtown Cape, compared to the very few that have occurred there, now granted, the, the crowd circled around them, uh, to see what was going on and whether it was necessary for the policeman to disperse pepper spray, I don't know. Uh, the letter also contained allegations of anonymous phone calls. Were these disgruntled minors who were denied entry? Are these people who, you know, have other vendettas against Mr. Warner? You can't deny a liquor license without telling me how many of these calls we're talking about, what times they were, and everything else you know about. You can't be convicted on innuendo and anonymous calls. The letter says that, you know, Mr. Warner's license was under previous review. Yes, the Charter Police Department improperly cited him when his, one of his other bars was leased, and it was reversed by the Liquor Review Board. I mean, yes, technically that's under review, but it quite clearly was submitted with a slanderous uh, tone to it, that somehow there was something improper about that. He was acquitted. 
uh, not convicted, um, then you come up with these two city license uh, cases that they try to charge as misdemeanors, which are impossible to charge as misdemeanors. 1.8 tells you that if there's any other penalty involved in the chapter, it cannot be a misdemeanor. Well, there's a specific penalty provision in there. And it's like every other tax statute. If you're late, you pay a 5% penalty for up to five months. That's what it says on the city instruction form. That's what it says on the city business license form. It all talks about penalty. And as long as that penalty is provided for, there'll be no, uh, you know, no trying to distort it into something else. Concerned me that they issued two of those citations to him. When I have a letter from, Dr. from Captain Blair saying that stacking of misdemeanors is one of the most hideous things that can be done, you can read his language. It's in this book. Uh, it's the last uh, exhibit, I think, 23. He says it's not the policy or the philosophy of Cape Girardeau, and Cape Girardeau will not be doing it. Well, they did it against Mr. Warner. You add all these things up, and you begin to wonder, you know, just exactly what uh, the problem is, I mean, if you blow enough smoke, you begin to think there's a fire someplace. But what occurred was his business was attacked. He had one fight in comparison to dozens every place else, and he had a band play there that the Cape Girardeau Police Department can't control on their own, so they're trying to blackmail uh, him into not doing it again. I mean. I don't know why just him, other than the fact that he has a substantial black clientele. I don't know if they're assuming that people who are black are more likely to belong to gangs or what, but we'll get into this if we have to, and uh, get into all the conversations concerning it and all the meetings. So anyway, I think the grounds for it are spurious at best. I think that there's a whole agenda here that is not... Um, uh, being articulated, and I think you've got some real problems with several other statutes, for which I would be happy to sit down with the city attorney if he would ever return his calls and discuss in great detail and brief them, and citing all the authority as well as the legislative history, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But my main point is, I don't think we have the right to be here tonight because the state has already issued its license, and under the 311.220 amendment that occurred in 2016, mm -hmm. you can't undo what the sovereign has done. Um, and you just have to read the case law and believe me. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Brown? I'd like to know if you all are going to reconsider. It sounds to me like you do, that everybody needs to be reconsidering what the gentleman has to say before you have to vote on it. As a, as a citizen of the community. Uh, some members of the council may say they'd like to hear from Lieutenant Smith. Please, first. Uh, I would like to point out that in here are statements from witnesses that saw it that arrived way before the police did. Uh, he lives in an apartment, has a big window, he was sitting by the window, he hears a gunshot, he looks out and sees them shooting on the church parking lot. It then moves towards the banquet center. Okay. But, you know, there are bullets three different places only one of which was in the parking lot of the banquet center. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Lieutenant Smith. <clears throat> Anybody have any questions for Brad? We'd just like to get, we had one view of this, we've not had the department's view. Okay, <clears throat> this is coming from the letter that I, uh, I presented for the Liquor Review Board. Uh, the following reasons are for, from the Cape Girardeau Police Department. This is approving the River Valley Banker Center's liquor license application and renewal. Between July 2018 and April 2019, Cape Girardeau Police Department responded to incidents and fights, disturbances, large crowds in the parking lot, and shots fired, weapons violations. Other such loud noises and parking complaints were received from subject who resided in near this location and did not wish to be contacted. There are five specific reports. On July 21st, 2018, officer was dispatched to 631 South Sprague for a disturbance and fight. 
As the officer arrived, he observed a large crowd in the back of this location. As he approached, he could smell an odor associated with burnt marijuana. As he got closer to the crowd, he observed a fist fight in the center of the crowd. As the crowd became hostile, with only having three officers in the scene, OC spray was deployed to stop the fight and dispense the crowd. Further investigation, a subject was issued a summons for the assault. On March 31, 2019, CGPD received information that a performing artist by the name of F. B.G. Doug was to perform at Ray's Banquet Center after a after fashion show. Contact was made with Ray's Banquet Center. We were informed them of the incident of the type of problems that followed this certain performer, and Ray's decided not to have them. We then later learned that the American Legion was going to host the same performer in which I made contact with the representative of the American Legion. Once again, I told them that I viewed YouTube videos of this certain performer performing uh, gang violence. More specifically, drug and gun violence, uh, at which time the American Legion decided not to host this group. This time we did not pursue any further investigation. We assumed that the uh, performer was not coming to Cape Girardeau. But I did perform, inform the patrol division to be on the lookout at other banquet centers to make sure that they weren't trying to host this performer. On March 31st, information was received that the FBG Doug was to perform at 631 South Spring. Once again, uh, the performer has gang affiliations out of Chicago, Illinois, and by watching YouTube videos, altercations often occur during and after his shows. His videos promote gun violence. At 0138 hours, a CGPD officer heard one gunshot coming from 631 South Spring. As the officer approached the business, he observed several subjects running from this resident, from this address. Contact was made with the owner, manager, Jimmy Seaball. He said he was not present at the time of this incident. Seba was asked who he had rented the banquet center to, and he replied he did not know because names are not exchanged and contacts are not completed. No one from the banquet center called the police in reference to this incident. Per your city liquor license, if there's any altercations, fights, or disturbances, you are required to notify us of this incident. On March 27, 2019, a CGP officer was on foot patrol in the 800 block of Maple Street speaking with the subject when he heard multiple gunshots coming from the area around 631 South Sprig Street. As he ran towards 631 South Sprig Street, gunshots continued to sound and people were fleeing the area on foot. At the conclusion of the incident, eight vehicles received damage by bullets. 42 shell casings were located in three locations, including 12 of these, 12 40 caliber and nine I'm sorry, and two 9mm shell casings were located on the back porch of 631 South Sprig, which is River Valley Bank Center. Mr. Warner has shown in the past he is not a responsible bar owner, manager, or partner. His liquor license has been under review in the past for the Independence Place Bar that he owns at 5 South Henderson and the River Valley Bank Center for such state and city liquor license violation. Whereas other businesses in the city of Cape Girardeau have had similar reports of fights, weapons violations, these places are open to the public and to anyone that can show up. Mr. Warner's business is a banquet center where it is booked ahead of time, where he or his manager can do his due diligence to do to research using Google, Facebook, or YouTube to make sure that either the people that he's booking there or the performing acts that will be booked at his venue do not carry such incidents such as fights, uh, assaults, or people who provoke gun violence or drugs. Uh, his lack of responsibility as ownership manager is a public concern. The last thing that the police department here in Cape Girardeau wants to do is shut down a business, either big or small. Small businesses are the cornerstone of Cape Girardeau, and this is what we thrive upon as our small business community. But when a small business, either new or either a small business or big, big business, new or old to the community, when it starts coming on our radar that there's problems being there because of lack of responsibility to the owners and managers of the establishment, we must take action to review their business and liquor license to make sure that they're not becoming a public safety concern to the neighborhood in which their business is stated. Anybody have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Can I rebut a couple of those briefly, sir? Pardon? Can I rebut a couple of those briefly, a couple of the points that you made? I think you've already had a rebuttal in your initial statement. Well, I'm just concerned about, you know, he is failing to recognize the First Amendment. I mean, I don't like people who burn flags. I don't like people who sing songs about violence or guns or anything else.
but I'm not going to take the First Amendment right away from them. Uh, and neither is the city of Cape Girardeau. The First Amendment does not give people a right to shoot guns and... The thing about shoot, he's talking about, he's talking about what's on YouTube and what is being he's discussed. About, he's talking about public safety. Public safety is the Social media does here. not create a public safety risk. Taking, take, relying on social media creates a public safety risk. Those are our constitutional rights. I don't like them, but that's just part of it. Just a way to research. Uh, but where a, in the statute? We have before where us. Where in the statute does it say that Mr. Warner has to do that? Your time you know, is you're, up. you're doing a legislative. I'll routine. say again, your time is up. You've had your chance. Lieutenant Smith had his chance. <coughs> it's now before the council to consider the appeal for a denial of liquor license renewal for Ridgeland Warner DBA River Valley Bank Center LLC, 631 South Spring Street. Any comments from the council? I have a question. When were these delivered? Today. The first time I've seen this is five o'clock tonight when I sat down. Yeah, I would think you would take it under advice. Uh, I would, I would see her at three thirty. I read through your information. Granted, I didn't get through all of it, but I did read it, and we received a lot of this information, um, the incident reports ahead of time. Um, I, I did have one question for Eric. Um, uh, Mr. Garf speaks to. I'm not an attorney, so three eleven dot two two zero. Can you speak to that? Specifically, specifically what right. his interpretation of it and your interpretation of it, what the law actually is. I, I don't think the law is as was stated that if you have a state liquor license, then a city does not have the ability to grant its own liquor license. I think if you talk to the, the Division of Liquor Control, they will tell you just the opposite. I'd be more interested in talking to the Missouri Supreme Court, and those are the two cases that are in your book. Thank you, Eric. Anybody have any other comments? I just want to throw this out there. Sorry, Shelly. I'm sorry, just about to start. You know, it's this this is a tough one because it's a small business. You know, whenever it comes to a small business and essentially it's livelihood through a liquor, you know, a liquor license, it, it just makes it tough, especially when the small business is located in a part of town where it's trying to inspire small business investment. And I, I just, I, I think that, you know, there have been some unfortunate events that have happened around this business and, and, and within the business, you know, in, in comparison to other businesses in our community. But I do think that, you know, you, you can't always judge, you know, the situation because of where this just happens to be situated. You know, if, if incidents have started in the neighborhood surrounding, started in a church parking lot surrounding, then that's just the happenstance of an incident starting. It's not the fault always of, this, of the business. And another thing, uh, the, the population in, in Ward 2, they do utilize the big, the, I've been to some of the uh, birthday parties that they host, you know, and no problem. And I did take time to talk to some of the people in the neighborhood, and it wasn't, uh, according to what they told me, it wasn't that the people was inside of the building that started shooting. They were on the outside of the building. Some type of beef. So, um, um, I mean, I'm really, um, all these state issues and, and all these different things that the lawyer mentioned, I see, but at the same time, uh, it could look like he, he's being targeted because of uh, as the law is saying, that they're blacks. I don't think that would be it, but I think that we need to maybe um, discuss it a little further because I wrote down this. I said, I want to know, do we do that with other businesses? Do we go in and we, we require them to have people investigating when they come to sing or uh, to perform? Do we really do that with other businesses? If we're not doing it with other businesses, then we need to recheck our way of being. So, uh, do we do that? Yes, I do. And we also do it even uh, when we, uh, when the city rents out our, our venues, we, we do that as well. 
but can we truly say that um, they provided the guns or can we say they knew that was going to happen? Not, I can't say that. And listening to the people in the neighborhood, they didn't, they thought that it was going to be people from out of town that came in and started jump with these young kids that was graduating from high school. And I would have been running myself, you know, but uh, that's how I feel about it. Maybe we need to really look at it and make sure that we are judging it fairly. Is it, is it fair to say, though, that the, the situation here is that there are there are responsibilities if you are if you do have a liquor license, your business has certain responsibilities that need to be met, and and the, the determination has been that this business is not has not been meeting them. Is that where we are, city? Yes, that's right. That's that was the determination that we made based on information that we that we had and the incidents that we had, multiple incidents that we had, that was that was that was that was the case. But they didn't report, that they didn't didn't check uh, they had uh, time for things to place that they perhaps they prevented and then they have had times when they um, things to place that they didn't report to police so that they could then respond. The police were sitting in the alley outside they were already on site there was no way you could have recorded it any quicker and you can look at the call logs and see the time so and that's that's on the, the situation that, that the claim is that the, they didn't report to the police then there was some there was some issue yeah, that, it was that one or it was a different one where they incident in July is the only one that we were not notified. The other two we were on scene already, so right. we were on right. right. so it was the July incident. We're like, that's correct. Thank you. Any other comments? You have before you a consideration to appeal this denial for liquor license renewal. I'll entertain any motion that any council member wants to bring up. I ask one if question. You want to this. It can be renewed for less than a year, can it? I mean, isn't that one of the rights of the council to grant a provisionary six months and see what happens then uh, versus a whole year? I'm not aware of that. Uh, yeah, I think you can. Yeah, you can. You can do it for a lesser time. If you yes, the council control. does have that. Do you have the authority to issue a provisional license for six months? Yes. It, it, you know, I would honestly, uh, I would go forward with motioning to grant a provisional license for six months, uh, just looking to make sure that issues going forward into the future are ready. You, you know, it's a six-month time frame that if issues continue to, you know, if, if that communication doesn't improve between the police, if, if the issues don't get, you know, get to be a remedy, then, you know, that will be back and forth, back in front of us in six months. Motion. That's a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Well, on that issue, have those issues been discussed in the past? And, you know, all, the, all, all of this, has, has there been a year or two or three or whatever discussion of these problems with the business owner? Nobody's met with the business owner, and the city attorney will not return his phone call. The city attorney has not received a phone call from you, Mr. Carson. Mr. Young has. So you um, have not you have not called the city attorney? I called city attorney's office and talked to Greg Young, who's assigned to this type of thing. He's the one who writes me the letters on chronic nuisance and things which they found it not to be a chronic nuisance. He's not going to get a chronic nuisance from that ordinance for folks. Uh, and I probably called him a dozen times. I mean I have my phone, we can look it up. But uh, we have before us a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion for a provisional license for six months? It gives us an opportunity to really. Well, it gives the small business an opportunity to mm -hmm. show that they can not have any violations and work with public safety officers to create a 
better environment. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion as presented signify by saying aye. 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 No. No. Okay. I agree we'll give this uh, Mr. Warren the benefit of the doubt for six months and issue a provisional license for six months. You got to do a roll call vote on that. I'm not sure we have an understanding of who voted. Yeah, it sounded like it sounded like three to two. Let's have a roll call. We have a roll call. Yeah. No. Bob Park. Yes. Robbie Picard. Stacy Kinder. No. Shelley Moore. Yes. Dan Preston. Yes. Fail three. We have the conditional uh, approval fail three. You have to have four, have four votes. Okay. How many people do we have? We have seven. One is vacant, and one is abstained. We only have we have we have one position vacant. Yes. And Mr. Gard is abstained. He has to abstain. That's right. So how do we not have three to two? If we only have you five three people, to two, it takes four votes to pass. When you only have six council members, it still takes four. The city charter says we have to have four votes to approve everything. And maybe we shouldn't have had this until we got a, uh, you know, another council person. Maybe we should defer. We couldn't. I don't have a I don't have a charter in front of me. I just thought it was. Well, I know it takes four positive votes, and yes, that's the result. Uh, the next item is the appointment of the Ward 3 unexpired term. Uh, I want to make a couple of comments first. I was really, really impressed uh, and overwhelmed that we had nine candidates come before us to... Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, I think we need clarification on the last one. Yes. Uh, what is the status of that appeal? Was the appeal it took four over? votes to overturn that? And well, it, it took it took four votes. The motion on the floor was to approve a conditional license for six months. Right. And, and that, that failed, so they, so they have no license still. And so at this so point, that's the take action. Yeah. Okay. Are you, are, is that what you're saying? There has to be a motion to yeah. to, to the, the, the motion should be to uh, uh, to uphold the appeal or to uh, reject. It. Okay. So we need another motion to either uphold or reject the appeal. Sir, just back to the drawing board of that? No. I, he clarified that we do need a motion to uphold the appeal or deny the appeal. Ah. Well, I'll make a motion to uphold the decision of the city manager. Okay. Go ahead and second. Deny. Yeah, uphold the deny. Go ahead and second. Second. Motion made in second. We have before you the motion to uphold the appeal. To uphold the denial of a license. So the appeal fails. Any further so discussion? Any agreement here would need to be four votes still or just a majority? That's four votes. Okay. 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 Charter. All those charter? in favor the of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. All those against the motion signify by saying aye. 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 So it's still three to two. In, in other words, then the uh, yeah. the denial uh, was not upheld. Yeah. So their license was continued. You got what you want, Mr. Martin. Now, well, all night, we're, uh, we're back to uh, talking about Ward 3. I was overwhelmed with the interest and overwhelmed with the people that showed their love of Cape Girardeau and their willingness to serve. And it was a very, very, very difficult thing to do to narrow a field of nine to three. And each of these three have a love for our community just to serve and, and they have unique talents in their own way and it, you know it's a very very difficult thing to do to look at three deserving very qualified people and pick one uh, 
but we as a council have to make that decision. And, uh, we made a vote, and I will let Mr. Meyer read that. Let me get those. Uh, and Mr. Mayor, can I just say I, I, I also appreciate all three candidates. Uh, you know, all, all three reached out via email or, or phone. Uh, you know, I, I would. I went through this process myself, you know, a year and a half ago, and um, you know, at the time, I appreciated the, the time with the council, and I know that um, uh, this process was not easy for the nine applicants that we we, we got. You know, I commend all nine, especially the three that were selected tonight, for putting themselves out there for public service. It's not. Um, uh, always the, the, the most fun, but it is very rewarding, and uh, I appreciate uh, all three of you. Second it because those ballots are not the issue. The votes that you get oh, the issue. that's the determining factor. Uh, Nate uh, 
uh, Mr. Thomas had a background working with um, uh, different legislative bodies, Washington, D.C., even some of our local um, local legislatures, our legislators. I mean, they both have big, big, great backgrounds. Yeah. That's, that's not the issue. They're both willing to serve. And the bottom line is we have to pick somebody between now and April to fill that position. And then whoever wants to run for that position in Ward 3 can do so. I, I will say, and I cognizantly thought of this, that if we were to appoint Christina, then we've got two from the university. And that could be put us in a, a tough situation uh, in negotiating different uh, agreements with the university. That's two abstentions right there. Mm -hmm. That's two abstentions, and then we would be back down to this. We could fail on something with the university with a three to two vote, because two would have to abstain. And we take ourselves back to 2016 with the university and what we did at Cap Hall. Something like that could have failed. With with two, it, I'm just saying, it could, it could have, it could have failed with two, with two uh, abstaining, and you win a three-two vote. It could have failed. You can't hold somebody's employment. I mean, you know what they. I, mean, I they told you. Say. I just, I put it I out there. I'm just saying, it's different. I mean, with the university being such a big, that those conflicts well, that of interest. We have people from Southeast and St. Francis. I mean, we have. Three or four large and, and I personally would have taken that into consideration. Sure. That could be true of any, any anybody. Any, it could any, be any sure. in the community. Yeah. That that was my if I'm if I'm <coughs> Yes, we have to do it tonight. Yeah, we're we had sixty days, I believe, I think we would have to call a special uh, meeting if we didn't do it tonight. And I, we don't have very many days actually. <laughs> yeah. And you do have a motion and a second on the table. So yes. that, that will have to be addressed this evening. We have a motion and a second. I just wish we could have all three of them. We would benefit from, from all of you. You're great. So. Absolutely. I do too, but we're, we're kind of caught in a rock on a hard place and we're on a specific time frame. And we have to. We have to make a decision. So at this point, we have a motion on the floor and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Give me a roll call vote. Bob Fox. Aye. Ruby Gard. Aye. Stacy Kinder. Aye. Shelly Moore. Aye. Jim Preston? Nay. Ryan Estes? Aye. You're welcome.
Is that okay? Yes, thank you. Thank you to everyone. Look forward to working with you. That does make it simpler because they have a lot of things to bring you up to date on and, and so forth. And we're going to get a book like this for you. So. I'll entertain a motion that uh, we adjourn to closed session of legal action of litigation, competition, communication, legal counsel, and property transactions pursuant to the revised section of the very section 16021112. Second. Motion made by Ryan, second by Robbie. All those fair say aye. Aye. aye.